another session. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a product called Solvers Composer, more specifically how to create video content using Solvers Composer. A couple of housekeeping issues before we get going here. Uh, if you have any questions during the session today, if you could just post them in the question section of GoToWebinar. Uh, there is a chat section, but we do not monitor that at all. Uh, I will answer any questions at the end of today's session. My name is Kevin Holbrook. I'm uh, one of the technical solution specialists here at CAD Dimensions. And uh, I want to show you how much easier it can be to create video content. Uh, I think in the SOLIDWORKS world, we have uh, several tools that could provide us with uh, video content. And uh, I think SOLIDWORKS Composer kind of takes the cake when it comes to animations. Uh, couple polls here. I just want to kind of get a cross-section of who we have online. Uh, first poll is uh, just finding out who's creating video content currently. So you should see this uh, poll popping up. Give you a few seconds here to vote. All right. I'm going to go ahead and close. I know some of you haven't voted. No big deal. Uh, and share this with you. So it looks like uh, you know some are, some aren't creating content at this time. Uh, for those of you who are not creating content, why not? So just to get an idea of you know what, what's keeping you from from creating video content. You know it could be uh, your job. It, it could be uh, it takes too long to learn the tools. Uh, maybe no time in your job. So there's a lot of different reasons, obviously, why somebody would have this, but uh, get kind of a sense here, and I'll go ahead and post that and share so everyone can see. And then for the folks that are creating content, uh, let's just figure out uh, what type of tools you might be using currently. So are you familiar with Composer or are you using it? Are you using SOLIDWORKS Animation? Maybe you're uh, using some of the Adobe products uh, or other tools uh, to do this. So kind of get a cross section. It looks like we don't have uh, any Composer users online. So uh, a lot of this will be very new to you folks. Uh, I'll go ahead and close the poll and share that. There we go. All right, on to our presentation today. Uh, Again, I want to focus specifically on creating video content using Composer. And I understand that not a lot of you folks have had any exposure to Composer, so we'll take a little bit of a step back and talk about some of the basics before we jump in. My story today is really about these four. You know, the good, the bad, the better, and the best is what I call it. You know, when we look at content, we can almost categorize them using these four name tags. Uh, I'll give you some examples. When you look at uh, assembly instructions such as this, even though there's images within the assembly instructions, there's a lot of words. Now this is uh, actually assembly for one of my children's cribs. Uh, and. Uh, you can see all the steps are outlined, but I have to read and reread, and nothing real nice visual to tell me exactly what to do um, step by step. So I would put this in maybe the bad category. Some of you may think there's worse, and I'm sure there is, but uh, this is what I would call the bad. Now here's an example of content. Uh, from a company called JL Audio. They do some audio equipment for boats, uh, marine, and obviously your vehicle. Uh, here's what uh, their content looked like before Composer. And you could just see some, some static images and some words. You know, I would kind of put this in the, in the good range, right? You've got pictures. There's not a lot of words. Um, it kind of describes and, and tells you what to do, okay? Now once you get Composer into place, now here's the example of JL Audio just taken a little further using Composer. Now we'll talk about what Composer is here in just a second, but you can see I have more content, more images. The images also have arrows and highlighting and color and 
other things on top of the images, uh, and they're not necessarily pictures. So I'm going to put this in the better range. So we're kind of working our way up. Now the, the best is what we're going to talk about today. Now here's just a, an example of a company that really gets it. Uh, if, if you've ever bought anything from Ikea, you know that uh, they really do it right when it comes to documentation. So here's just a video you can find on YouTube today um, that just tells you how to assemble something from Ikea. Now this is a, you know, a, a real video with images overlaid on the video itself, but you can see that there's so much clarity in something like this. Um, hopefully this comes across well in, in the web here. But you can see uh, somebody actually took the time to create a video to overlay these things on the video to point out exactly where to get things done. And uh, you know, I would say this is the best case for creating documentation, whether it's end user documentation, uh, whether it's uh, you know, work instructions, whether it's training. Uh, I think that's kind of why you're all here today. Video content is the best. Now let's talk about SolidWorks Composer. Now SolidWorks Composer is one of the tools in the, the suite of products from SolidWorks. It actually originates uh, from a, a company in the Dassault brand called 3D Via. And I would say four, five, six years ago now they they rebranded it SolidWorks Composer and continued to develop. Now really the, the basis behind this tool is to leverage the 3D data for technical product communications, for assembly instructions, product manuals, video content, training material. Any of these things can be either video or still images. Now what it's also going to allow you to do is put other things on top of the image like notes and arrows and cross sections and things you would typically take a still image into another product to be able to do. Uh, Composer is going to allow us to do that. You can see some of the benefits listed there. You know, obviously if you can uh, create better content, your customers are going to be more satisfied. Now you'll notice there's a, a decreased cost and time to market listed there. Um, what you see here, and the reason why that's listed as a benefit, is because we can start to develop the content, the video content, the still images, before the design is even complete. You're going to see today, as I, after I create the video, that I'm going to have a design change to the document, the video itself. And uh, I'm going to be able to just update the work that I've already done instead of having to redo that work. Now I wanted to have a real nice model to work with today. So I, I tend to go out to uh, a website called GrabCAD. And uh, when I jumped out there, there was a new model that was placed up there recently uh, by a gentleman by the name of Min Seng. He has uh, placed a model for an Eagle Make EM1 3D printer. This is an open source 3D printer um, for folks who wanted to build their own and then maybe print another printer from a print, from this uh, open source. So everything is spec'd out uh, for this printer. You can order it and so on. But I wanted the 3D model, which happened to be a step file. Um, you'll notice at the bottom, and this is just a little screenshot from some of the documentation out on GrabCAD. It says, how to build an Eagle Make EM1 Pro. And it says, this part is under process. Please wait. And I got to thinking, you know, wouldn't it be phenomenal if we just had a bunch of videos on how to make this thing? Um, and, uh, you know, they don't have anything currently. Hopefully he's going to have some, some documentation. But I wanted to use this as my example today. So let's take a look at what my end result is actually going to be. Now, this is a very simple video. We can create this literally in uh, a minute or two. But I want you to just consider what kind of effort this takes to create this video in the tools that you currently have. Now I have notes that pop up, I have parts that go transparent, I have arrows in here. So I have a bunch of things kind of going on, rotations, zooming, I even have mechanically showing how this thing could move uh, within the system. Now 
For a composer, this is very, very easy to do. And that's what we're going to create today, is something very similar to that. So let's take a look at how we would do this in Composer. Now, I've already imported the model into Composer. Uh, how do we go ahead and bring that model in? For those of you not familiar with Composer, all it is is a file open. We select the CAD format we want to bring in. Now, I mentioned to you initially that the uh, Eagle Make printer that I found is a step file. Well, Composer is CAD neutral. So whether it's a SOLIDWORKS file, an IGIS file, STEP file, or even Inventor or other file formats, we can bring those into Composer. When they're brought into Composer, it brings in the entire tree as it existed inside the CAD tool. And you can see off to the left here, I kind of have everything I need related to the components. Now the interface for Composer is very simple. We have the ribbon bar, very similar to what we have in SOLIDWORKS, that just has commands sorted by uh, the like uh, options, like transforming and rendering. Off to the left-hand side is my panes here. I have the assembly pane, which I showed you the tree. And the other one we're going to focus on today is this views pane. Think of views in Composer as the uh, the picture on your digital camera's memory. Uh, this is where we store those pictures. Now, the, really the basis behind Composer is that we can change all the properties of the CAD model once it's in Composer and not affect the original CAD model. So I could do things like changing the background, changing the lighting, changing color and materials and position, and the software is going to remember all of that. Now, how do we do that? It's very simple. We just get things where I want them, and we snap a picture. There's a little button over here. We'll snap a picture. Maybe I want a top view of this thing. I can go ahead and snap a picture. Maybe I want to zoom in on the print head. I snap a picture. So it keeps everything that I have here. Now, the premise behind video content in Composer really relates to the images that we have. Now watch this. If I go back to the original image and then double click on view one, which is the second image I captured, you'll see that the software interpolates or almost animates from one to the other. This is going to allow us to utilize this movement to create animations in Composer. So let's take a little step forward for a moment. What I've done is I've snapped a bunch of images. And I'll just take you through them. I have the original isometric. I have a view looking from the front, a view from the back. I also have some movement of the tray. And all that is is using tools in Composer to transform, kind of like an explode in SOLIDWORKS. And I now focus on the head. Okay, that head, I slide left to right, again doing a transform. Now, you can almost get an idea of what I want the video to do initially just by clicking through the images themselves. So how would we get started with animations in Composer? Well, this little icon in the graphics area of Composer allows me to switch between animation mode and picture mode. Picture mode is where we capture the image. Animation is where I bring up the timeline. Now, once I switch to animation mode, you should see an animation timeline. In my case, the animation timeline did not come up. All I have to do is go to the Home tab and turn it on. Now, for those of you who have created animations and other tools, a lot of these tools use a very similar concept. Uh, to create animations. It's a timeline with something similar to keyframes. Keyframes is the idea that we're capturing information about an object at a certain period of time. Now, Composer works the same way. However, we can take advantage of the images that we have to start creating our content. 
Notice my timeline. At the very beginning of the timeline, I have a list of some of the different things that we can start to work with. I can set the location, the opacity of objects, change the materials, even create events. Events in Composer are things like make something flash and stop. I can change the viewport, uh, which is the background, uh, the camera, and there's a tool called the digger. All these are just different things that we can work with. The one that we'll use most is this properties. This is where we can change the properties of any object. Now, a good way to figure out what properties you can adjust is just to select something. I'm just going to select a platen here. And off to the left, you'll have a properties pane. Now, within that properties pane, you'll see a bunch of different fields. And next to the field, if you see a red dot, that means that's a property that cannot be animated. Everything else within this pane can be animated. So I can change the color. I can change uh, the opacity so I can make it more transparent. I can even change textures. Now, we're going to be doing a lot of this as we go through today. But keep that in mind. This property section is really me changing something that the software sees that object at. Now again, I want to quickly create this video. And you'll see right at the zero mark, at the very top is what we call a marker. And this marker tells me that it's original. What that means is this image titled original is my starting point for everything that's going to happen in my timeline. Now I could certainly delete all those keys and start from a different image, but this is where I want to start in this case. Now the timeline also has some, some tools built into it. Uh, first of all, panning on the timeline, I can hold down my right mouse button. I can also roll my wheel in and out, and you'll see the timeline zoom within it as well. There's also some uh, zoom to fit tools if you get too much on the timeline just to make it easy to navigate what you're dealing with. Just to the left of that is some VCR-like controls uh, to be able to play, hit next, so on and so forth. These are the crux, just to the left of that, the crux of the keys that we're going to talk about a little later. These get down to the nitty-gritty of what we're capturing. But let's keep it easy for now, because Composer does do things differently. How do I create that, that video that I wanted just based upon the images? Well, it's very simple. All I have to do is drag the images from the views pane onto the timeline. So let's just start off by dragging the original image again. I'm going to go to maybe one and a half seconds. And you'll see as soon as I drop to that one and a half seconds, it creates these objects within the timeline. These objects are your keys that set where something should be at a certain period of time. Now the reason I drag the original on again is because I want it to stay stationary to start with. Now I'm going to reset my original here just so it's the same. So stationary for one and a half seconds. And then when I get past the one and a half seconds, I want it to take two and a half seconds to rotate to the first view. I want it to stay there for just one second. And then I want it to rotate to a back view for three seconds. Using my middle wheel and my mouse, I can just drag the timeline to the right and continue. Next is the platen raising and lowering. I want to hold this position for one second. Notice just dragging the views puts the name at the top and fills out all the keys. I then want it to take two seconds to go down. I then want it to go back up in two seconds. Then I want to focus on the head. So let's uh, get it to hold here for a moment. So we'll hold for a second. And then we'll continue to drag the rest of these right to the graphics area. I'm going to hold on the head for a second and then finish with the movement of the platen or the print head left and right. So if I just rewind with these VCR-like controls and hit play, you're going to get an idea of the video 
movement that I just created very simply. Just because Composer can interpolate between the images that I have, I just captured those images and dropped them on the timeline. So think about that. And some of you said you did this in SOLIDWORKS. Think about how much work that would be in SOLIDWORKS as well. It's a lot of work. Now let's talk a little bit more about some of the buttons that are listed here. Well, first of all, this time bar that you see at the end, the red line, really uh, shows me where we are in, in time. Now that we have images on here, I can drag the time bar anywhere I want within here just to see you know, where things are occurring. So I can use that quite a bit. Now, sometimes you want to grab things and try to understand what's changed on a particular item. So let's say I just grab this particular object here. I can come up here and there's a filter that says show me keys for these selected actors. So you can see where properties may have changed specifically for that item. Now I didn't happen to move that item specifically, I moved an assembly, but it would show up as a key here. Okay, so it's a way of kind of sorting things out along the way. Now we haven't really changed much in terms of properties. You can see here there's no keys in this row coming across the top. We're really changing the location of things by moving them, and we're changing the camera positioning, how we're looking at things. Well, how do we start to do some of this extra work manually? So here's an example. I find a point in time, uh, maybe when this thing gets flat, and I decide I want something else to show up on my video. Now when I say something else, there's a lot of other things that we can author on top of images. And those can be arrows, different styles of arrows, round, uh, corner angles. I can have circles to highlight different areas. I can put text and images, even explode paths and labels. Uh, onto everything. But in this particular case, I just want to put in a little bit of text just to outline that Eagle Make makes this printer. So we're going to do Eagle Make 3D printer. Now everything you place in Compro Composer has properties. So I can change the size of this and make adjustments to the text at any point in time. But if I look down on my timeline, look what just happened here. I now have, let me just slide this out of the way, I now have keys in here that are adjusting the properties, the opacity, and the time in which this thing pops up. Now remember this option that says show me keys only for selected actors? Watch what happens when I pick this now and say show me keys for selected actors. Everything else disappears and you can see where the software has created points in time to make something happen. Okay, and it does it automatically. Now how does it do it automatically? Let's talk about that for a second. There's an option here called auto keys. Auto keys watches for changes that you make and it creates the keys for you. For instance, if I'm now at this point in time and I want this thing to disappear maybe in here, I could come in here with this selected and just make it transparent. I change the opacity. And you'll see that a key automatically gets created at that location. Okay. Now, if I wanted that key to show up without this on, I'll turn off auto keys. There are other ways of capturing properties. So now I'm just a few seconds or tenth of a second before what I had before, and I want to turn the opacity of that thing up way back up. You can see that no key got created behind this blue line. That's where some of these other buttons come into play. These are used when auto keys are off. These are used to set the properties set the location, set the camera, 
and then something we're going to talk about a little later called the digger. So if I wanted to set the properties of the selected item, I just hit the little set keys, and you can see it creates a little keyframe there. So let me just rewind this so you can see what I've just done. So I have a video that starts rolling. I have a point in which uh, a, a piece of text comes in and then it fades out. So it's very simple. I'm just controlling the point in time in which it occurs. Uh, however, there are a lot of other things that we can, we can make happen here. I'm going to turn back on auto keys. I'm going to just do something very simple. I just rolled this in the timeline to some point, and I want to pull the cover off this thing, maybe this cover, just to peek inside of what's going on here. All I have to do is use some of the existing tools in Composer, more specifically a tool called Translate. So I pick the component, I tell the software I want to translate it, and I drag it out. Okay. Now by doing this, it sets the position key for that thing to bounce out. Notice it comes back. Okay. So this is where auto keys can really help you do some things in Compose. The last tool I want to outline is a cool tool called the digger. Now what the digger does for us is it allows us to focus on particular areas within an assembly while we're zoomed out. So what I'm going to do here is just hit my space bar in Composer. This brings up our tool called the Digger. The Digger has a tool that says, I want to focus on a particular area. And I can even adjust the zoom level and the diameter of this thing as well. Once I have that, I can come down to my animation, and I'm just going to set my digger key. In other words, I'm turning the digger on. Okay. Now, how long I have that digger on is up to me. Maybe I want to get to this point. Maybe zoom it out a little further and readjust, and I can set the digger key. And then I'll go just a little bit further down the line. I'm going to hit my space bar to turn it off and then set my digger key. So what I've just done using the tools is turn on a specialized tool, zoom and make it larger, and then tell the software when to turn it off. All in a video. So here's what I've done in just very simple. Turn on a, a, a piece of text maybe make the cover explode, you'll see here in just a moment, turn on the digger tool, focus in on something, turn it off, and watch the print head move. Very, very simple concepts, very, very simple tools that can help you to capture things, but it does us no good if we can't actually create a video from it. Now, videos are very simple. We use something in Composer called a workshop. One of the workshops is for video content, where I can save the video out as an AVI format. Okay? It doesn't take long to run, but it will save it out just like the video we started with today. The last and final concept has to do with updating. I've just spent all this time creating a video. I have the video complete that we showed at the beginning. You can see all the keyframes and changes. And I'll just run through this one more time here so you can remember what this looked like. This is the video we started today's presentation with. Very simple, probably took you know all of two, three minutes to do. This is just outlining things within this uh, printer that we have. Or you can see covers that are transparent, hide and show, and the movement uh, that we have along with some text. But what happens when the model changes? It's almost certainly going to change at some point, whether there's an ECN that gets issued, that a part needs to change geometry, or whether your design is not complete. Well, Composer Animations makes it very easy, because all I need to do is go to the File menu, tell the software I'm going to update the Composer document. I then go to the newest version of the step file. Let me find my step file here. 
and I tell it to update. The software will go through the step file, compare the original step file to the new step file, update any geometry changes, and now all I have to do is re-export my animation and it's done. Now of course I could certainly go in there, make some adjustments, uh, add any new steps or camera changes. Give this just a second to complete. And we'll take a look at what we have. So I made a, a simple change to the side panel that you can see. And you'll see this all throughout the animation. Okay. So I don't have to do all this extra work. Uh, everything is kept for me. Um, it's ready to go. So if you've never used the timeline tool, the, the thing about Composer that makes it so compelling is its interpolation between the views. Using the images to help develop your animation just makes things a lot faster. So I want to thank you for attending today's webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please post them in the question section, and uh, I'll get to those now. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.